And, um, you know, again, that proves the spiritual, to me, the spiritual reality that to be set free from it is, is, you know, it's a spiritual, emotional, not just an intellectual thing. I'd say I'm a little calmer when it happens, but, you know, they're always trying something different. I mean, we've had uh, two or three incidents over the last uh, six months. And, um, you know, you, I wish, you know, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll corner one of them and I'll just say, why? And I know the answer already. Because is, was, would be the answer. I don't know why. I just, you know. In other words, that's their reality because that's what they do. That's the answer. The answer is, why do they stalk you? And the answer is, because they stalk you. That's why. What's the sound of one hand clapping? One hand clapping. Duh, right? But people don't see the answer. Why do they stalk you? Because they, I asked a friend, and there's a spiritual component when they drive you nuts to be like a schizophrenic. A lot of that is when they, they do rituals and target your – and they, they have a way of entering into you, breaking into your soul, and stealing your sanity from within you. This is the demonic, okay, and destroying your mind and then watching you commit suicide or whatever. That, that gets them off. Why do they do that? And my friend said – who was you know, compromised by this whole thing. He said, because they can – they target someone and destroy their lives, and then they, they get off on it. They high-five each other. I've seen it over and over again. Most people are not here to testify. Sorry. They weren't strong enough. Okay. But why do they do that? There's no law against that kind of evil. That is psychic intrusion into a person's mind, destroying it, and then stealing talents they have, from within, which is a spiritual thing, okay? And then, you know, hollowing them out like they're on a, a conveyor belt and being uh, going to a slaughterhouse in the spirit. And then they're just an empty shell walking around. And I said, why do they do that to that person? And then that person ends up either going to a mental hospital or killing themselves. And then I know the witches, they're witches who are responsible for doing it. And I said, why did they do that? Because they're in concert with the demonic, because they work with the demons to do that. They have that power, and the only way they can keep the power is to target an individual and take them out. They don't have to do it in a pentagram with candles like a Hollywood movie. It can be done right there in the workplace with cubicles. They decide who they're going to target, and they do it. That's called mob stalking, right, in, in the office place. But it doesn't, it's not just stealing something from the desk and all that to drive someone crazy. It's a, there's a spiritual component of invasion inside the soul. Inside the mind, rather. Not the soul, but the mind. I asked him, why do they do that? Because they can. In other words, the answer is, why do they do that? Because they do that. That's why they do that. Because they do that. In other words, they just do that because that's what they do. Thousands of years they've been doing that. So let this be a primer on the whole thing. I, you know, with, with me, it's like I've just, um, there's really nothing you do. If you go up to your stalkers and you start talking to them, they're just going to lie, you know, so there's no point in talking. Yeah, I guess if you were to um, put one in a laboratory, you know what I mean? If you were able to get a hold of one and, put him in a, you know, like interrogate him, like waterboard the guy, he would just break down to be a sniveling idiot and scream, crying. And, you know, if they, they also can't, these gang stalking people, they can't take solitary confinement. If they were put in solitary confinement, they would eventually lose their minds because they exist in the collective, in the hive. That's why they have to have that psychic link. If you break that, you break them. But if you break them, what, what good is it? All they're going to do is cry like a baby and be feeble and mentally ill and you know what are you going to do right you're not going to get any satisfaction out of getting one of them in a room because they're pathetic they can't they're not even you're not even dealing with a whole person they're not anything without their group so they're just going to be a pathetic little person saying stupid little things 
And you're not, it's not going to help you to get to the answer of why. All they're going to tell you after all that, you know, effort, let's say they uh, got, you know, arrested by uh, interrogators and the FBI waterboarded them, okay? They wouldn't get any answer. They're, the only answer they get is because we do. Because what are you talking about? I'm not aware of anything like that. Um, uh, that person who's accusing me is just paranoid. Um, I've just, you know, I go to work here. I do this. I live here. Uh, my life's an open book. Why are you mad at me for, you know, that you'll get that. That's all you'll get. Yeah. Are you sure that all this rumors is like all the satanic ritual abuse rumors that went around years ago and they all decided that that was all falsely planted memories. Remember that with the McMartin school case and all that stuff that went on there. And later we had witnesses that we interviewed that uh, said, yes, indeed, that was all going on. And one of the big honchos of all that was a guy named Jack Parsons of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, the, of Caltech, you know, the big rocket scientist. He was like the big head Satanist out in L.A. for a while. And did anything happen to him? No. Nothing happened to anything. It all got swept under the rug. Ted Gunderson was the guy that was on that case. It all got swept under the rug. Franklin Coverup, swept under the rug. Pedophilia in the White House, swept under the rug. Male prostitutes uh, servicing, um, you know, Congress man, men, swept under the rug. Why is Barney Frank still there with, when he was running uh, underage prostitutes out of his basement? Because... He's had them sleeping with everyone in Congress. So therefore, they all can, are compromised and blackmailable, right? So Barney ain't going to go anywhere. He's got uh, the goods on everybody. Never underestimate the need for a man to, you know, to, to stumble sexually. I mean, this is a common thing. And, and you know, it... it uh, Weird, the weirder the sex, the better. Some in a traditional marriage. I mean, a lot of, you know, boy, I'll tell you, the pornography industry and everything else. So, you know, it's, um, look, what you need to do is, is be grateful to God and thank God that you're not one of them, a stalker. You thank God that you're not in that hive mind network of slavery because can you imagine if one of them said one day, well, I don't think I want to do it today. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's no option. That, that person will be the next one uh, in, the, in the morgue. Okay? So that's how bad it is for them. Just be thankful you're not one of them. Now, Proverbs 1, and this is where I'm going to let you go because I want this to all be on one theme. And like I say, I'll be doing more shows with a lot more TIs, doing it from a secular perspective, any kind of perspective. Any kind of information on this is great. It's not as if the Bible doesn't already know about this. <laughs> it's not about like you, 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 you know, um, beginning at verse 10, the first proverb is about gang stalking. All right. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So, but really sinners here is a group. So if the group comes to you, if the gang comes to you, do not consent to it. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily and private for the innocent without cause. Remember, without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance and shall fill our houses with spoil. In other words, yes, they want to steal from them. Cast in uh, thy lot among us and let us have one purse, they say. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Okay, this group is the gang stalker. They're not talking about communists, okay? Although communists are, are gang stalkers too. But they're, not, they're talking about the collective hive mind. In other words, cast in thy lot with us and let us have one purse. Hive mind. The group, the gang, do not agree to it. The world's filled with different gangs. And like I say, these gangs, or I like to call them covens, they fight each other. 
But the Bible's well aware of this mess. In Ezekiel 13, the same thing. If we go to Ezekiel 13, we see that the people who are running Israel at the time were running uh, Jerusalem at the time. And we see, um, gosh, I turn right. Imagine that. I turn right to the exact page. Have you ever done that where you just flipped the Bible over and went right to the page you were after? Isn't that amazing? Okay. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, prophesy thou against them. And say, thus saith the Lord God. Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. You with me? Will you hunt the souls of my people? And will you save the souls alive that come unto you? Um, I could just say it this way. Will you stock the souls of my people? And will you save the souls that come unto you? Come unto you is also a term meaning set, meaning to compromise yourself, to have sex, to become a part of, to be consummated. And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread and slay the souls that should not die, i.e. the innocent, and save the souls alive that should not live, i.e. the wicked? By your lying to my people that hear your lies, wherefore thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, Wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly for power. Okay. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go. Even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs I will also tear and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Okay. So the Lord has a plan to rid this reality from planet Earth. Because these people, um, you know, you're not alone. They uh, infiltrate governments and take over, as they have here in Israel in ancient times, in Ezekiel's day. And he prophesied that the Lord will not always allow, he allows it to a certain extent, but he will eventually overturn it. He won't allow the corrupt ones to, you know, to kill the souls that should live, and to make live those souls which should die. In other words, the wicked live and the, the, peop, the, 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 the innocent or the spiritually pure or the people that are, you know, have the soul of the lamb or the people that God made for himself, these are the ones they hunt to, to get rid of. And what happens when they get rid of them? Uh, they fly. In other words, power. There's power in that. Why do they hunt the souls? Money power, and sex. Those are the three reasons the people are stalking. Okay? Money, power, and sex, the most guttural motives of all. What's the rule of the game of gang stalking? Attack the good people, compromise them, destroy them, and, 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 and uh, gang up with the wicked and let them run the world where the, the good people are destroyed. Same no different thousands of years ago than it is today. And I'm just going to leave it right there because I think we've, we've, I think we've definitely figured it out once again in Jesus name. I pray protection upon all of you who hear this. I pray the blood of the lamb on this entire transmission today in Jesus name. And I will see you next time. Zeph Daniel.